Hi there, my front end friends. Did you know that we have 54 length units in CSS? Yeah, you heard that right, 54. Luckily, a lot of them are for more niche use cases and there are generally only a handful that we'll use for most things, but still, it can be hard to know which one to use, so I've created a flowchart to help you figure out what unit to use in any given situation. And so let's jump right into that flowchart, which is right here, and it is of course linked in the description. You can go through this entire thing on your own, so I don't wanna make this video just me going through the flowchart, but I do wanna make it a little bit of me explaining my thought process behind some of this, just to give a bit more insight than I could actually include in the flowchart itself. Uh, and so we're sort of go through the main categories and give an overview of them and maybe on some of the more important things that I've mentioned along the way in here. Uh, but one of the really important things here, first of all, what are you declaring? And you sort of choose which thing you're, you're declaring stuff on. Uh, but it's very important this is for lengths only, uh, so we're not looking at things like angles or timing for animations and transitions or other things like that. And it's also for screen and not print, so I'm not going to talk about centimeters or inches or picas or any of those types of units either. Also, very, very important, <laughs> this is a general guide to help you pick. Uh, right, right there, general guide to help you pick. There is always, always, always exceptions to everything. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you might go through here and be like, oh, but in this one time, I thought it was really good to use this instead. And you were probably right. And it was the right thing to do. So uh, this is more for people that are having a hard time knowing what unit to pick. So just to try and make your life a little bit easier, general guidelines only. Just want to get that out of the way before I get a bunch of people in the comments telling me that there are times to use this or not to use that or whatever it is. And let's start with the easiest one, which is right in the middle here. <laughs> you can see there isn't too much to this part of the flowchart, uh, which is for our positioning and our details slash effects like borders and outlines and shadows. Um, and this is when you can just use pixels or rims. And you might hear a lot of stuff about don't use pixels for a lot of stuff. And there are definitely times you should not use pixels. We'll talk about one of them soon. But for small little details and other stuff, you need a two pixel border or one pixel border for that matter. Uh, it's easier to use pixels than to use a rem. Uh, or if you're just used to using rem and you want to be consistent with everything, by all means, use rem for those things. And there's definitely other times you can use some like other stuff than this. For example, I've seen good use cases of percentages with uh, like a top or bottom or something like that. But most of the time, it's more trouble than it's actually worth. So uh, yeah, in those, uh, those situations, I think pixels and rems are what you're going to use 99.9% .9 of the time probably. So start with those and it probably will get the job done. Uh, the one place I mentioned we definitely do not want to use pixels is with our font sizes. And that's just because they're not as accessible as other units are. So <laughs> the one thing with font sizes are uh, there's a lot of decisions you got to make along the way. And this is part of why I wanted to make this flowchart a little bit was just to highlight the decision making process that you should be going through. It was like, where am I declaring this and why am I declaring it? So on the HTML element, you want to put a font size. First of all, do you really need to set one? This also is the same for layout elements. So a div, a nav, your main, your side, etc. cetera. Uh, that loops all the way around and comes back to, do you really need a font size here? Because chances are you don't. <laughs> a lot of the time people are setting them there when they don't need them. Uh, there are times you might want a font size on the HTML to actually like, you know, on a media query that boosts up what the default is. There are times where you can have one, that's fine. I have a yes here, but a lot of the time you don't need to bother. So just gonna throw that out there. Uh, the one thing people do like that 62.5% thing on the HTML, uh, I've linked to an article here by Josh Como. I'll also put it in the description of this video on why you probably don't need to bother with that. It, it can actually get in the way of third parties and, and some other stuff. So, you know, just get used to using REMS at, at base 16. It's a little bit awkward at first. You get used to it relatively quickly. Um, but maybe you do need a font size for whatever reason, that's fine. Uh, so I just say, do you want it to be responsive or not? If not, and for font sizes like rem most of the time, if not, you probably want to use a clamp um, with viewport units, or if you want to get fancy and you're not too worried about browser support, you can use container query inline units instead. Uh, the one thing I will do here, I didn't want to go through every one of these boxes, but if you are using a clamp, or if you do want to use viewport units in any way, do use it inside a clamp, if we're talking about font sizes still. Um, oh, I made a, a responsive. Let's fix that while we're here. Um, but here, uh, yeah, just really important not to put viewport units directly on fonts uh, or for your font size. 
because they just cause problems. They get too big at big screens, they get too small at small screens, and if you zoom in and out, the font size doesn't actually change. So you do want to use them within a clamp, so you're setting a maximum and a minimum, and you generally want to have like this math plus, or you have seen these as minuses as well. Um, it just links that viewport unit, at least to a certain extent, with an actual fixed size. So when you zoom in and out, there's no mushy middle, it's still gonna have an effect on the font size zooming in and out. So really fast there. Um, you can do that. As I was talking about this, I remembered I have a video on this topic too. So <laughs> I've added the, the video link to here. And once again, the video link will be in the description uh, about using clamp for your font sizes if you want some responsive fonts. Um, the other thing is if we get to our text related elements and our inline elements. So text related to me is things, your H1, your H6, your paragraphs. Um, and then we have our inlines, like you might have a span that is inside a paragraph or a span or a link or a strong or whatever that's inside of a list or whatever it is. Inline elements within those, generally speaking. Um, so they sort of both fall into the same area. Uh, you know, do you first, do you need it to be responsive? Yes or no, it falls into the same category as everything else. Um, and with inline elements, do you want it to be usually when I'm, you're putting a font size here, you want it to be relative to whatever it's inside of. So first of all, you, if you want it to match the font size of the element it's inside of, just don't do anything and it will. <laughs> That's generally how these work. Uh, but if you do want to change the font size of it, usually I'm declaring these in M. Uh, and the reason is I just want it to be relative to the font size of the parent. So I'll have a span inside my H1. And if the H1, you know, I'll say it's my H1 is three rem in size and then my span inside of there I'll declare it as a 0.5 m and then that means it's half as big as the h1 that I have set up so if that's three rem it becomes a 1.5 rem and the advantage there is if I change the font size of my heading it's also going to change the font size of the span and that can get really convenient if you're using things like clamp where the font size isn't really defined right we have the font size of the h1 can be adjusting according to the viewport width and then that m is automatically going to adjust along with it but we can also get more precise with things like line height x and cap uh, browser support for these is not perfect i think x has pretty, very good browser support actually whereas line height and cap are a little bit lower uh, but that just means you can set the font size to the x height of a parent <laughs> and the x height if you're not aware i don't think i have an x anywhere in here uh, but it's just the height of the letter x and that just means that it's sitting uh you know sort of baseline to the top of a lowercase character so that can actually be really useful i love the x uh, but we're also getting cap so we have the cap height the capital letter height and the line height of our elements too. So we can get the line height of something and we can set font sizes. And you can even set like a height of something. You have a pseudo element or something that you need the height of it. Uh, you can use a line height there, but again, line height and cap check browser support. Uh, they might be okay. I'm off the top of my head though, X has the best out of all of these. And I'll include a link in the description actually that goes into the, the breakdown of those. But a lot of the time I'm just using M and I'm happy there. Um, spacing is a little bit easier. <laughs> what are we adding spacing to? Text, your padding, or space between elements, thinking margins, but also potentially gaps. Uh, so with text, I'm usually using either M or Rem, and I've linked to a video here, and I'll just say it now that M is probably the one that you want to be using most of the time, uh, just because it leads to a more natural flow of your document. And if you want more, you can, I'll again link to that video um, in the description, or you can get it through this flowchart. Uh, that looks at why M is probably the unit you want to use for your spacing between paragraphs or your headings and all of that. As far as padding or space between elements, uh, which again is could be margins or it could be gaps, do you want the space to be a fixed size or not? So, you know, I just need padding that's going to be one rem. We'll just set it in one rem, or <laughs> right? There's nothing complicated there. Uh, if you want to, you could also go into pixels. Um, that's fine. I did include M here as a fixed size, and I just mean fixed in terms of like, it doesn't adjust with the viewport, right? It's just, it's always going to be the same on that element. So, uh, but it, that doesn't mean it's relative. I like using M for padding on buttons, for example. So if I change the font size of my button, the padding on the button adjusts with it. So it sort of controls the overall size of my button. So there does tend to be a little bit more of thought on like, should I have it something as M or should I set it as rem? It just depends on if you want it to adjust with the font size of the element it's on or not. Uh, and it's up to you. Or you might want it to not be fixed. You want it to adjust with the viewport and be a bit more responsive or, or adaptive or whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, in those cases, viewport widths or heights are fine, but I would include them within a min or a clamp uh, function while you're doing it just to prevent them from exploding, getting too big or too small. Because if you set padding in viewport units, it's really easy on phones for that to get really, really tiny. So a min function would prevent that from happening. Um, or of course a clamp says, here's the smallest you can get, here's the biggest, and we can grow in between that. Once again, um, I've included a, a link to a video. Again, it will also be in the description of this one. Uh, and you can also use container query units. I mentioned that here as well. So if you're using viewport units, again, container query units don't have the best browser support yet, but it could be a better alternative than viewport units, um, depending on what you need. So throwing that out there. Next up, we have our flex and grid stuff, which I guess sort of links, like I could have made this margin, but just in case somebody might be doing spacing, right, listed gap, so that goes to the space between. <laughs> we have flex or grid where uh, the gap between elements I put here, again, just because I want people to, you know, it can go either way. Um, I'm gonna have, I forgot to put my arrow, but we're just gonna, we're gonna link that all the way back around because <laughs> it's gonna be the easiest way. Or you know what, let's, let's do that live now. We're gonna put the gap all the way on this side and we're gonna draw that that link here uh, going right to there. And there we go, I added my arrow in there as well. <laughs> so the gap stuff can go that way. Um, and then as far as things like your grid columns, your grid rows, and then flex, well, actually no, we'll get to flex in a second. If you're dealing with grid, we have our grid rows and our grid columns. Do you want them fixed or do you want them a bit more fluid? Uh, so fixed sizes as usual, you have your pixels, rems, completely fine to use. And if it's grid, chances are if you want them to adapt and to change, you probably want to be using the FR unit, uh, which is unique to grid. You can sometimes get away with percentages, but percentages are a bit more awkward. They don't take into account the gap, so you can easily end up with overflow. So usually I recommend FR. And this could be like I have 300 pixel locked in sidebar and then one FR for my main area. So you can mix these depending on the column. So you have to think about it on each column, what do I want? This column should be fixed, this other column should be fluid, no problem there. You don't have to use only one or only the other, just you have to think about it on a column by column or a row by row basis, which is what I sort of get to on this one. And I do mention, you know, you could just leave things auto and they're gonna sort of sort themselves out uh, or there is the min content. And we also, there's a few other options that you can use um, there, but min content is just, it's gonna be as small as you can get based on the content that's in there. I find that's usually the most useful one out of those. Flex items, <laughs> or flex item widths I put here. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm just gonna throw the caveat out there. Flex item sizing is hard because they're fluid. And that's the point of using flex boxes. We generally want things to be moving around. Uh, so saying I want this flex item and I don't want it to move can be kind of weird. Um, so it depends on like maybe grids actually better depending on what you're trying to do. But of course there are exceptions. There's always rules. Uh, but generally speaking with flex, instead of saying I want it to be a certain size, you're often saying I want it to be this size or bigger or this size or smaller. So you'll be setting a maximum or minimum size on them. So using a max width or a min width uh, generally works really well. And then I do mention if you want it to be a specific size, so it has to be 500 pixels, then use a flex grow and flex shrink of zero, and then you can use your pix uh, pixels, rems, or percentages. I did mention percentages for all of these because you might be saying I wanted a minimum width of 50%. So it can get bigger than that, but once it gets to 50% of the parent, it will stop. And that's sort of where it gets to. Same idea here. You might want it to be 300 pixels and it just never changes because the other thing on the side is shrinking and growing. That's completely fine. Again, this is for a child by child basis, just like with our columns and rows would be for each individual column you're making these decisions. Um, so you just have to decide how do I want each one of these flex items to be working and set the appropriate thing that you need for it. Definitely, I have a whole bunch of videos on Flexbox and, and understanding it and figuring out how it's working, but just know that usually Flexbox means things move around. So if you're really fighting with Flexbox a lot and you need to have something a bit more defined, maybe then you actually wanna be using a grid instead just cause that sort of sets the stage a bit more, um, a bit more, Firmly, I guess, is one way to look at it. Uh, the last area here is my widths and heights on an element where, well, what are you declaring a width or a height? And you can see there's a lot <laughs> of breakdown in here. There is a lot of thought that goes into when you're setting things. Um, the one thing I will say is on a height or max height, which I have here, do you absolutely for sure need one? <laughs> um, 
You probably don't. Most of the time, heights are a problem. If you really need a height, it's usually with a min height, in which case, if it's a fixed size relative to the height of another element or relative to the viewport, I give some options here. Uh, I recently did a video looking at the SVH, DVH, and LVH, if you haven't heard of them, that will be linked here and it will be linked in the description, uh, where it's the small viewport height, dynamic viewport height, and large viewport height, which helps with dealing with it on mobile devices mostly. But then of course, you know, sometimes percentages, percentages on heights can be a little problematic though, um, or you can just have a fixed min height. Max heights and heights, the reason I really <laughs> try and say not to bother is because it's just a way to get overflows most of the time. Uh, there are times you have to set a height, so uh, you know, you sort of fall into the same category as the regular ones. Just really be careful if, you know, make sure you really, really need a max height or a height because um, you pr a lot of the time we don't actually need them and people set them and it causes more problems than they're worth. Uh, as far as width, uh, a max width, definitely just pixels rem or I do recommend CH in this situation. Um, so CH is characters wide. This could be really useful for setting a paragraph max widths. You set a max width of like 65 CH. Um, and again, I have a, there's lots of videos I've done. So I have like over 700 videos here on YouTube. So, and they're all CSS related mostly. Uh, so, uh, you know, th that's why I'm linking off to so much stuff. But uh, CH, yeah, it's, you know, this paragraph will be about 65 characters wide maximum. And then that means it can shrink when you're getting on mobile devices and stuff. But uh, it's really good because ideal line lengths are done with characters, right? That's usually how we, we I think it's 75 is about the most you ever want to get to. Um, so it's just a nice way to set those, but you can also use pixels or, or uh, rem. I think that's fine. Uh, as far as min width and width, that sort of falls into the same thing as our max height and a height in general. Are you sure you need one? Uh, and then if you do need one, I go into more detail. Do you want it to be relative to another element, a fixed size where I'm missing an arrow? So we'll add that in there or relative to the viewport. Are you sure you want it to be relative to the viewport? Because again, we're talking about min width uh, or width here. Uh, a lot of the time viewport units don't do what you think they are. They're more problematic. So I sort of veer away from them. I link off to videos that talk about the problem of viewport units and all of that. Uh, a lot of the time the default is actually what you want. So just be careful when you're setting widths uh, that are relative to the viewport. And same thing here, if you're going into percentages for widths, if it's 100%, do you really need it to be? If it's something that's like a position absolute or a position fixed, you might want a width 100% because you actually need it. But if it's just a regular block level element, you probably don't need it and you actually want to leave it as auto and just not touch it. Uh, and of course there is the container query inline unit, which is sort of my alternative to uh, the viewport, <laughs> um, which is probably a better thing. But again, we do wanna be careful with it when you're setting widths. A set width or a min width can cause problems, especially with overflows. So we just wanna be careful. Max widths tend to be the one that you wanna set most of the time. But yeah, if you wanna go into more detail with this, you want, you know, just to be able to reference this, there's no, email sign up or anything like that you can just access it right down below uh, and jump right into it and as i've said a few times just now uh, during this video viewport units are some of the most overused units and worse than that they can actually get in the way and actually cause a lot of problems with things so if you'd like to learn more about that you can check out the video right here or if you'd like any of those other ones that i've mentioned along the way they are all linked in the description and with that i'd really like to thank my enablers of awesome who are web on demand andrew simon tim and john as well as all of my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.